Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video from my channel Interactive Education running for the best education possible from the student to the student for a better experience. And today we will be continuing the chapter Heredity and Evolution and we will be starting with the next topic in this chapter that is Sex Determination. Now. In the last video, we discussed Mendelian experiments, how Mendel came up with the two laws of segregation and independent assortment. And now we're going to we're going to look at another important aspect of genetic transfer and heredity, that is sex determination. Now, sex determination is basically the determination of the gender of an organism, and it is you know different in different. It varies with organism to organism. Let's take examples. Uh, if you take the example of a snail, snails are bisexual organisms. What this basically means is that they are able to change their sex uh, according to their will. So they don't have a fixed sex or a fixed gender by birth. It's just changing, and as per their wish, they keep changing that, right? So a snail is an example of a bisexual organism. Uh, there are other organisms which are dependent on temperature. So even sometimes, temperature uh, determines gender. So there are many cases in which the temperature uh, uh, during the gestation period determines what kind of organism, sorry, what kind of sex the organism which is going to be born will be. So sometimes if it's too cold, it may be a male, or may it's, it's warm, so it may be a female. So it's dependent on the gestation temperature during the gestation period, during the growth period of the organism. That time too, uh, some in some organisms, uh, temperature depends determines the gender, right? So these are some two examples, right? I told you about bisexual organisms where, uh, you know, it, it, they can change their sex at will. And I, I also talked about temperature in some cases, which determines gender, right? <clears throat> but here, one very important observation is that in both cases, gender uh, is not influenced much. Influenced much by genetic factors. So in both these cases, you can see that genetic factors don't play much of a role in sex determination. As in the case of a snail, you saw that really it changes its uh, gender at well, so it does not have a fixed genetically determined gender. Similarly, uh, in case of temperature, you can see that fertilization will take place and, you know, growth will be there. But again, the temperature is the factor which is determining the gender. So again, genetic factors don't play a role again, uh, a very major role here again. They don't really do that. So it, this gives us a question in our mind that do actually genetic factors or any kind of genetic um, uh, background determine the sex of a child or of an organism, right? And uh, the answer to, to that is yes, in many organisms it is determined in that way. And to understand this, we will be taking the example of the very common and very beloved humans. Right? Human beings. Now, in human beings, we know that there are two sexes. There's a male and a female. How does genetic uh, factor determine the gender of organisms in human beings or of children in human beings? Let's see. To understand this, we need to look into a bit of the genetic, uh, you know, structure of human beings. I've discussed this numerous times before that human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes and we know what a chromosome what chromosomes are chromosomes are basically thread-like structures which are present in nuclei of cells and you will see <clears throat> that it's like that they're present in the cell and these nuclei uh, these uh, the chromosomes they are actually 
in, uh, you know, they are made up of proteins called histone proteins, and these histone proteins are just wrapped up, struck, uh, wrapped up collections of the long DNA, right? And the point and unit of a DNA is called the gene, and that gene is the one that's unit of DNA. Unit of DNA is gene. And genes are basically proteins of a single, of particular sections of DNA. And these genes help determine various characteristics and they have the information to reflect those characteristics as well, right? And they play a major role in the expression of traits, in the expression of characteristics in phenotype of organisms, right? But that's not a topic right now we're going to discuss. We're going to look into this. So there are 23 pairs of chromosomes in human beings. After these 23 pairs, 22 pairs are called autosomes. And these autosomes are perfectly paired chromosomes perfectly paired chromosomes, right? They have a perfect pair, pair okay? Each chromosomes, uh, chromosome pair is perfect, okay? Same size, same shape, just the same uh, perfect pair. But there is one pair specifically, there is one pair, right, which is called the sex chromosome pair or simply the sex chromosomes. Right? And the problem with that, and, and, and the special thing of these chromosomes is that they are not perfectly paired. Right? Not always perfectly paired. There are some exceptions to this group. And this is what we need to focus on today, the sex chromosomes. Okay? So let's have a look at these sex chromosomes. Now, when scientists actually looked into chromosome distribution and blah, 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 they looked and they, you know, they observed something. If you look at a male and a female, they both have 23 pairs of chromosomes, right? But there is one pair of chromosomes which is showing a slight variation between the two. In females, this pair of chromosomes is a perfect pair. So if you see in females, it is a perfect pair. In females, it has been seen that this pair is completely perfect. But if we go to males, it has been seen that this pair is odd. It is pretty odd. Why is it odd? It's because the pair is like not a, a proper perfect pair. It has been seen that one pair is different from the other. You can see here in the female that both, pair, both chromosomes are identical. But in the male one, you can see that they are not, they are not identical to each other. There is a slight difference. One chromosome is slightly shorter and smaller than the other chromosome right? And since we saw this variation of this particular chromosome, okay, it was noticed that this chromosome was responsible for the gender of the organism, right, in human beings. And special names were given to these chromosomes. It was seen that in females, we have two identical chromosomes forming a pair, and they were named X chromosomes. Both were named X chromosomes, right? So in females, we have a linkage of two X chromosome alleles, right? Two X chromosomes are attached, two X alleles are attached and form a pair of chromosomes. In males, however, there is one X, which is similar to that in the female, but there is also another short, smaller type of chromosome, which was called Y. Right? 
And this was a bit different from X, that's why it was named Y, it was different. And in males it was seen that there is an arrangement of alleles as X and Y. Right? So it was seen that in females there is an XX allele pair, and in males there was an XY allele pair. Right? So I hope that's clear to you. Now, seeing this distribution of the sex chromosomes, seeing this, this distribution of the sex chromosomes, now let us try to determine, how, let's try to see how the sex is actually determined, right? So now if we look at that now, let's come to that portion. You know, there is a male, and the male basically has a sperm as the male gamete. Because that's the sperm, and that is the male gamete. That is the sperm. Right? And it is the male gamete. Right? Now, there is another gamete in human beings, that is the female gamete. And it is called the ovum. It is called the ovum. Ovum, which is the female gamete. Right? Now, it was seen that, you know, we, we, we have already seen that the sperm and uh, ovum both have half the number of total chromosomes are, which are to be present in a normal organism. The sperm has 23 chromosomes, not 23 pairs. It is only 23, so it has half the number of chromosomes, and this has, again, 23 chromosomes, half the number of chromosomes, right? When these two fuse, they give 46 chromosomes, which accounts to 23 pairs of chromosomes. Right? So that's how actually the number of chromosomes is maintained. So it was seen that in this ovum, there was one sex chromosome allele, and in the sperm, there was one sex chromosome allele. Right? In all ovums, it was seen that the sex chromosome allele was always X. The sex chromosome allele in ovum was always X. But in sperms, it could be X or Y. It could be either X or Y. Unlike the ovum, which only had a X chromosome allele, right? And the sperms had an equal chance of having an X chromosome allele or a Y chromosome allele. Now there came two possibilities. Possibility one. If the sperm had an X chromosome allele, and if the ovum had X chromosome allele, then the offspring or the child would have an XX sex chromosome pair, and it would be a girl. Right? Because X and X together, one perfect pair, it was a girl. Right? It would be a girl. Right? Number two. If the sperm had a Y chromosome allele, if the sperm had a Y chromosome allele and the ovum, which will always have a X chromosome allele, the child would have XY chromosome pair, and this would be a boy. Right? So we conclude here that if there's a perfect pair of XX chromosomes, it would be a girl. If there is a mismatched pair of XY chromosomes, it would be a boy. Therefore, the boys are mismatched and the girls are 
very well matched. Right? I hope this concept is absolutely clear to all of you, right? This is how sex determination takes place in human beings. In many rural countries and areas, there is a misconception that the female is responsible for the sex of the child. It is not true. The female is not responsible for the sex of the child, but the male is responsible for the sex of the child. So, we should respect We should respect our women and in many countries if it's a girl child she's abolished she's in there's infanticide there's feticide and girls are really treated badly but he, and even if the girl if it's a girl child and the mother is really cursed she's not she's not she's treated badly that's a wrong practice it should not be like that it's because the male is responsible and i'm not encouraging any kind of uh, bias towards girl child all ch children should be treated equally but because there is a girl child the woman is tortured the woman should not be tortured it is the man who is responsible plus girl child should be given equal uh, importance in society right that's just a uh, value based question for you right so that is how the sex of a child is determined in human beings, right? And with this, we conclude our concept of sex determinant issue for today. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something and uh, I hope you have no doubts at all. If you do, they are most welcome in the comment section below. Goodbye, stay healthy, do like and subscribe uh, and do keep studying. Bye-bye.